In this presentation, we will record the receipt of inventory with a bill. In other words, we had a purchase order that was issued in a prior presentation, a purchase order to a vendor requesting inventory. And now we have received that inventory. We've received that inventory along with a bill and therefore want to record the inventory that has been received on the books as well as the bill in the format of accounts payable that we owe to the vendor within QuickBooks Pro 2020. QuickBooks Desktop 2020. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by selecting the view drop down up top and selecting the open windows list. We had last time entered a new vendor, a new purchase order for a new vendor up top in the purchase order. Our scenario, as you recall, is that someone came into the shop into our guitar shop we were hoping to sell them a guitar in which case we would create a create sales receipt however they wanted a guitar we don't yet have from a vendor we don't yet have and that vendor was fender fender which we set up as a new vendor as we created the purchase order we said all right well we'll, we'll order that guitar for you we created a purchase order up here in order to do that requesting the guitar from the new vendor fender which makes the guitar and now we have received the guitar. You'll recall the purchase order has no financial transaction in this case. We just ordered the guitar. We haven't uh, received it. We haven't uh, had any payment on it yet. Now we have received it and therefore need to record both the bill for it, the accounts payable that we owe on it, and the inventory that now we own or have in our possession. So we're going to record the inventory. We'll do that by selecting this drop down. We're going to say receive inventory with a bill. And you can imagine us, of course, getting the guitar and we're, all, we're kind of excited. We got the, the new vendor Fender guitar and it has a bill inside of it, of course. And so we're going to put the bill in uh, the system now. So we're going to put the bill in the system. It should be tied to the purchase order. So if we put in the vendor, which is the new vendor, which has the name of Fender. So Fender, we'll put in Fender and tab. And then here we have it says there's an open purchase orders exist for this vendor. Do you want to uh, receive against uh, one or more of these orders? We're going to say yes, we do. And so there we have it. There's the purchase order. If I select that, we're going to check it off and then say OK. Then it'll populate the bill for us. Now, if we mess that up, if there's a problem, we can close it out. We can just not, you know, you can X out of the bill and then do it again. And it'll pop up. will then hopefully show up again and we'll be OK with it. Now the date that we're going to have on here is going to be the 14th. It currently has the 9th. So I'm going to select the plus uh, button on the keyboard plus key until I get to the 14th. The amount is going to be the correct amount, the 168. The uh, bill is going to be due according to the normal terms that we have here. We could adjust the terms uh, down below. I'm going to keep the terms that we currently have on it. You'll note down here that we have two tabs on the bill and you'll note that also that the bill looks a lot like a check very similar kind of format as the check we're going to enter in essence the same type of information as the check but the check you'll remember of course means that the checking account will be going down because we're writing a check the bill means that accounts payable a liability what we owe to somebody a vendor which in this case is vendor will be going up the rest of it looks much the same as in the case of the basic tabs down below. The normal ex uh, I expense tab, really it's kind of not, not the best name for it. I would think of it as basically the expense tab being everything other than basically inventory. It's going to go here. Pretty much everything other than inventory goes in the expenses because we might have a bill for furniture and equipment we purchased and, and we might put it here or something like that. And then on the items, and that's not an expense, but an asset. That's why I say that. And then the items over here really mean inventory items. Basically, if it's a bill, we inventory items. Why do we need the second tab? Just like with the check, the inventory items are going to be something that we not only need to populate on the financial statements in inventory, the GL account, but also the sub ledger giving the detail of what supporting information is for that inventory. In other words, what type of inventory is it? We need that supporting information when we deal with inventory. And it's going to be an SQ, Squire. We got one of them for 168 and so on and so forth. Then we have this field here, which is the customer job. We need this in place and we're going to call it to be billable. And what that means is that uh, when we go to actually invoice or create a sales receipt, and we choose the customer of new music stuff, it'll give us that pop-up and say, hey, 
you have this connected item here from uh, that we could put as a billable item do you want to include that and we can link everything together in that format not only that but you'll note here that this amount with the 168 is the cost that's what our cost is you and when we go to the when we go to the add this to the sales receipt or the invoice it'll actually pull not the cost but the uh, sales price because that's what we're going to sell it for we're going to mark it up and sell it so it'll actually connect it together and use the proper number the sales price not the cost when we allocate this to the invoice or sales receipt as we'll see in a future presentation so let's record this and see what will happen and we, we would expect accounts payable to go up and the inventory uh to go up so i'm going to say save and close and let's check that out let's open up our reports we're going to go to the reports drop down up top we're going to go to the company and financial let's first take a look at the balance sheet the balance sheet that's where we stand that's where i like to start where do we stand at this point in time so we're going to go up top to the customized reports I'm going to change the dates from 010120 to 123120 that's january 1st 2020 to december 31st 2020 and okay and then we know that it was a bill therefore the accounts payable will be going up there's accounts payable it will be increasing there's the 168 double clicking on it we see the transaction for the bill of the 168 double clicking on that we see the bill that we have then created closing this back out closing this back out the other side of this transaction then is going to be in inventory inventory is here double clicking on the inventory scrolling down we see the 168 and that is a bill you can see the format of it too the type of document the type of form double clicking on that 168 we see the actual bill once again closing this out closing this out now if we think about the accounts payable there's a supporting documentation who do we owe that 168 to to know that we need the form or the report of reports drop down and then we want to go to the vendors report we want to go to the vendors payable let's go to the vendor balance detail vendor balance detail report and that will give us the 168 notice this is very similar to what we've been doing in the accounts receivable it tells us who we owe the money to we owe the money to in this case um, fender which we set up as yes a new vendor so we'll close this back out that of course ties out to this number here and then we have the inventory assets at the uh, 2112 that needs to be supported by the types of inventory we have what types of guitars in our case do we have we can see that in the reports drop down we can go to the inventory here inventory valuation summary changing the date to 12 31 20. we then should have this number the 2112 reflecting uh the the inventory items as well the inventory that we have then recorded or have received in this case being the new vendor or the new uh type of inventory which was the sq squire this one that's the new one the 168 right there so there's the one uh 2112 2112 if we go back to the balance sheet i'm going to say there's the 2112 no effect on the income statement why because we we purchased inventory so the inventory asset went up and the accounts payable uh, went up when will the income statement be affected when we sell the inventory then it's going to reduce the invent this inventory will reduce the cost of goods sold and we'll have sales on it so that'll be done with an with a sales receipt or an invoice let's do this again so we're going to go back to the home tab we're now going to enter another bill for those other items we received and so we're going to say receive inventory uh, with a bill now this was our normal vendor this is from epiphone our trusty epiphone vendor that we buy our guitars from usually and we we're really just stacking our shop up with these guitars so we're going to say epiphone tab and it's going to say hey there's a purchase order for epiphone and we say yeah we put that in place and we want to check that one out that's the one we want so we're going to pick that one we're going to say okay it's going to populate for us we're going to keep it at the 214 and the amount will populate for us looks good the due date is going to populate according to the terms we typically have we could change the terms down here if we so choose but we're going to keep the default then of course it populates in the items tab not the expenses tab and we have our elp this is our standard kind of guitar that we have this is like the normal one and we're stacking the shop with it we sell a lot of these and we got three of them the cost is 400 and that's going to be the amount notice there's no customer here 
because we're not billing this to a particular customer. We put them in place just to just to populate our shop. So now we have three more guitars we're putting in our guitar shop and anybody that walks in, we're going to we're going to put the put them in their hand and show them how cool it is and they're going to buy it where we'll have a sales receipt as a re record. So we didn't buy it for a particular customer. So this will be doing the same thing. Accounts uh, payable will be going up and then the other side will be inventory going up. Let's check it out. We're going to say save and close. We'll then go to the balance sheet. Within the balance sheet, we can see down here in the liabilities, we have the accounts payable 1368. Double clicking on that, we see that we have the 1200 for the bill. If we select that item, we see, of course, our bill. Closing this back out, closing this back out. The other side of this is going to be in inventory. So if we go back up to the inventory, there it is. Double clicking on inventory. And we see the 1200 in inventory. Double clicking on that. We, of course, go back to our bill. Closing this back out. Closing this back out. We see that inventory will be so supported by the schedule, the inventory valuation, which we have open in the open windows, or at least I do. It's over here in the open windows, so I'll check it out. And it's going to be right here, the 3312 And now, of course, we have four of these ELP Epiphone guitars if we go back then to the balance sheet we also note that the accounts payable should be supported by a report telling us who we owe the money to which vendors we owe the money to and i closed that one for some reason so i'll open that one back up by going to reports we're going to go to the uh the vendors and payables and then we're going to be going to the vendor balance detail report vendor balance detail and you'll see now then that we have Epiphone that we owe now $1,200 as well. And then Fender, that total then between the two, $1,368. That then, going back to the balance sheet in the open windows, is what is on the balance sheet. Now, this might be easier to see again if you go to the trial balance. So I just want to get used to this. Uh, I'm going to the balance sheet right now. Notice I got to scroll up and down a lot just to get to these two accounts on it. If you were to go to the reports drop down accounting and taxes and take a look at the trial balance then you can say 010120 to 123120 and then you can see all these two accounts much more easily without all the subcategorization might help you to understand the debits and credits as well but even if you don't understand the debits and credits uh, you could see that this, this account's going up which account's going up why because the number is getting higher or lower you can think of it in up and down but it might be useful to learn the, 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 deb the debits and credits, or if you're used to debits and credits, this will be an easier format to look at. The debits and credits are actually easier to work with than a plus and minus format if you understand them.